Cool. So it's 10.30, so we can start. Okay, so next up we have Daniel. He's going to be talking about TinyGo and how to build toys with TinyGo and lots of hardware. So round of applause for him, please. Hello, I'm Daniel Esteban, also known as Conejo. And uh, I will talk today about uh, building toys or games, devices, uh, with TinyGo. I'm a maker. It's like I make things on my free time, usually involving electronics. And uh, maybe you are asking, what, what is TinyGo? TinyGo is not a subset or a superset of Go. It's the same language. It's just uh, a new compiler that targets a very, very small place. Um, we released version 0.12 two days ago. If you want to know more about TinyGo, you could check the link there. Um, about the last year at Fosden also talk from Ron Evan. And now we are sponsored uh, by Google. When I talk about uh, small places, I talk about this kind of microcontroller. Like, they are really small. Uh, maybe you should see this, son of you. But it's like, Arduino, uh, BBC Microbit, some of the Adafruit, like Itsy Bitsy or Secret Play, uh, Playground Express. <coughs> TinyGo also compiles your Go program uh, to smartwatches, like the Pine Time. Uh, just go to the AW building and check the Pine 64 uh, booth stand they have there. We have support for uh, several other devices, sensors, and actuators, like uh, RGB LEDs, real-time clock, humidity, temperature sensor, uh, sound, light sensor, this time, a lot of things. And also, uh, a lot of displays. If you don't have any bar or jet, or you don't have any devices to play. You could, uh, we also have a playground. With, we simulate some of the board, and you could try TinyGo without installing anything on, on your computer. So what are you going to see today? Well, some uh, small toys, some fun to make projects that you could do at home. All the information is on the slide I will upload later. Uh, I will just go over the highlight or the main different part that you need, uh, the very basic you need to make this project. So the first one is the gopher set. I don't know if you know that uh, this game is called Simon sometimes. Like it plays uh, a different tone and lights a different color and you need to match that color and it will be going uh, a longer sequence each time you, you uh, uh, <coughs> for the Simon, it's very simple. We'll only use three buttons and three LED and some printed par and I will just use an Adafruit Playground Express, which is uh, this little bar. Our Go code, we start with the import. We just need uh, to import the main package, the machine package, uh, which is a special one to talk to the hardware. And we also are going to import like tinygo.rx driver buzzer, which is to make sound. To set up the, the LED, we just define an LED like machine.a1 or a2 or maybe d12 because it's the pin number on your board. We configure it as an output pin here, 
And to enable the LED is as simple as LED.high or LED.low to disable it. For the three buttons, it's very similar also, but instead of output, we configure them as an input. And uh, just to check the status of the button, is it pressed or not, yes, we do button.get, and it will return uh, true or false. For the buzzer, which is a small speaker that makes sound, again, we define uh, the buzzer pin, we uh, configure it as an output, and then we create a buzzer uh, device. And to play a song is as simple as just call the function tone with a note and a duration of that note. The rest of the code is your normal Go code. There is no difference there, there. Uh, and since it's a bit a little longer than I, I wanted to, I will not show, but it's already in the slide and in the hub to check it. But you will check it's the same. It's the same as Go and it's no difference. To flash it on your board so it's programmed, you usually just connect it to your computer and Normally, is uh, you press double press the reset button, so it's uh, your uh, the the board. In this case, the circuit playground express enter <coughs> the uh, programmable uh, state, and then it's. I, I'm sorry, and I don't know how to change now. <laughs> I could make bigger. Yeah. So to flash it is just as simple as tiny go flash. Just specify your target. In this case, the circuit play, play express and the code you are going to flash. We wait a little. And now, wait, it has a battery, so. And now we have our Go program here. It will play. and it will go longer and longer. <laughs> <It's a laughs> For the next one, uh, I don't know, probably you know the game called Pong. It's sometimes it's a hockey game. Uh, we just need a display. This one is not so tiny. It's a little big. Actually, this is one like you could put one, several together and make those big billboards on the street or in the stadium. Yeah, it's supported by TinyGo. And also for this case, uh, I just add a real-time clock. So actually, uh, the game is playing itself while uh, showing the hour, and when it's time, one player or the other will lose. For the game, we just need two potentiometers. I use them as the knob here. They are uh, analog input. We also use that huge uh, LED matrix, and in this case, I choose an Arduino Nano 33 IoT, 
And as you said, a real time clock optional. Again, the, the import part is you just need to import the machine package. Uh, the driver for the Hube 75, which is the LED matrix, driver for the real time clock, and the tiny phone package, which is uh, a special package also that allows us to draw text on every tiny go display supported. For the analog input, it's very similar as the button of the previous example. In this case, we need to initialize the analog to digital converter, but the same is we just choose a pin and configure it, and instead of true false, now we are getting an integer variable depending on the value of the analog. For the screen, also, Quite simple, we, dis we define a serial peripheral interface, SPI interface uh, for the screen, and we create a Hube 75, which is the screen uh, device. We make some configuration of the displays, but then we just call, like, we could change each pixel with set pixel. Yes, the X, Y coordinates and the color. Again, you write the rest of the code, you uh, uh, put it in a bootload model and flash it. And there you have it, here. For the real-time clock, again, in this, instead of SPI interface, it's an I2C. We configure it and we just use, like, uh, you will see, I mean, you are seeing that this is normal Go code. For a third project, we could make a portable game console. Uh, you have some option. This is, all, we are also using this as batch. But, yeah, it's a little blurry, sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I put the GIF there because it's better. You have several options here. You could make a homemade one with a spare part you have, uh, or you could buy us. Yes, there are some board like this. This is a pie batch, but there are also pay, pay uh, gamma or each batch. Like more or less, uh, as long as it has a display and some buttons, you could make your uh, own games. Of course, if you want something more uh, professional looking, you could use a Game Boy Advance. Because actually, it's your own. We just come. We just compile a Go code, and it's running on a Game Boy Advance. I cannot tell you exactly how uh, you should put your binary files there. Maybe it's not really legal, <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> and for your games, you could use TinyDraw. It's a package to make simple uh, primitive on every screen that is supported by TinyGo right now. We also have TinyPhone, 
which is to write uh, text on the displays also. The last two projects I like a lot. They are community projects. They are also open source and open hardware. Uh, the first one is called Scornabot, which means Beatles. And uh, it's an uh, educational robot similar to uh, a Bebot or a Cubeto, and it's great. And I mean, it's being used in a school right now uh, to um, introduce young children into programming. Uh, children are not programming the robot itself, but uh, they are just uh, using the top buttons here uh, to make the robot uh, move or turn. It doesn't that much. Just uh, you, uh, the, the children click the button, like move forward one step or two a step, then turn right, then go backward. As I said, it's been used in a, in a school. Uh, if it's not the Scornabot, it's usually the Bbot or Cubeto. Uh, they, they have several uh, different activities uh, with them. For the robot, uh, you just, the most important is like you just need two stepper motor, five buttons, uh, one buffer to make sound, which is optional, uh, some 3D printed part, and a microcontroller. Uh, the different, I mean, the, we already see how to uh, use the button, and the only addition to this project is the use of two motors with the easy stepper driver. <clears throat> In this case, if you have one motor, it's just create a new step, easy stepper device. You just configure and just tell the motor to move 200 steps. But we have two, so instead uh, we use an uh, easy step new dual device uh, and just tell them move. Uh, again, we flash the code and see in action. In this case, uh, it's a little gopher. <laughs> so we just tell them to go forward turn right, and then come back, because, and it's moving. The last project is possible my favorite. Uh, it's called Open LED Race. It's also a community project. It's open source and open hardware. Uh, you just create a racetrack with an LED strip. Uh, <clears throat> and then uh, make the different LED uh, move. Uh, I mean, you simulate a race uh, with any input. For this, you need an addressable LED strip, uh, anything as an input, and just a microcontroller. The only difference here is the WS2812, which is the LED strip. Just select the pin for the output, create a new device, and. Uh, you just write the color you want to appear on the LED strip. I will need two volunteers that want to uh, compete in the game and uh, just win some uh, hardware we have to give away. So if you know how to click a button, please <laughs> <laughs> raise your hand. Just check it, both of you. Okay. 
again. Uh, since it's an open hardware project and community driven, I said you could use anything as an input. So pe people is doing different kind of thing. We just simulate the track. Uh, in this case, on the left picture, you, you could, we could simulate the gravity, so we are creating a virtual slope that will slow your car and uh, on one side and uh, speed it up on the other. Yeah. No. Also, uh, in this case, Arduino Nano has a Wi-Fi chip, so why not add Wi-Fi to your project and uh, uh, have telemetry data like the professional? And if the Wi-Fi works, Okay, maybe. You are going to be the red gopher, you are going to be the... Wait. <laughs> okay. Hey. Wait a moment. Yes. Okay, it's too much. Yeah. Uh, wait. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if the Wi-Fi is working, but we'll see. Yes. Oh, it's not working. But press the button. Yes. For, for both of you, oh, this you. and Arduino Nano is compatible, and you could make this. So, uh, as I said, everything is here. Okay. Uh, everything is here. All the uh, projects you see are working and are on GitHub right now. And uh, if you just like, uh, join us at TinyGo. Uh, channel of uh, Slack. And thank you.